Do you know part of the problem is, though, people are afraid of being cancelled. If they say what they actually think, they're afraid of being cancelled. And I think there is a middle ground here where people do care about the environment. They also do want to have a, a pension fund that, that makes money for them. And perhaps there are issues that, that they don't want to get involved in, but that they have to pick and choose. And your bigger point, and this is a really important point, I think, from the book, was that you're afraid, in a way, of businesses not doing enough but paying lip service to it, but sucking the oxygen out of places like Washington, D.C. So, in a way, creating sort of tribes within society that have certain views, pushing us to extremes, but still not taking action. So there's no room for, for politics to serve the purpose. And I think the counter to that, in my case, would be that I think people have got sick of waiting for politicians to act. And so they're, they're sort of pushing businesses in a direction. So I'm not sure who's pushing who and what the fix is, Vivek. So that's why you're on my show. What is the fix well, here? That yeah, so look, I think the fix is restoring the integrity of both capitalism and democracy by separating one from the other. And you put your finger on exactly the right point. That's the debate we need to be having. But right. I think we can actually, rather than sacrificing our politics and throwing in the towel and saying we should give it to corporations the power to solve our social problems instead, I think we should do the hard work of fixing our politics, to go back to a place where every citizen's voice and vote does count equally. And you know what? You're right. We live in this moment of fear where I have never seen a greater gap between what people are willing to say in private and what people are willing to say in public. And part of the problem is when the private sector becomes politicized, people have a fear of losing their job, fear of putting food on the dinner table for actually speaking their minds. To me, that isn't America. That isn't a free society. And what we really need to restore is a place where, you know what, when you're the only person in the room who believes what you do, you should actually be able to speak your mind, whether that's a, a DEI meeting at work, whether that's a corporate board meeting. And what you'll probably discover is you weren't the only person in the room who believed what you did. And we can go back to debating ideas freely without fear of cancellation. At the same time, we're only going to get there if we actually separate this use of economic force, the economic cudgel, to punish people who defect from the acceptable ideas that can be voiced today. So I think that's where we need to go. And at the end of the day, if we can go back to restoring the power of democracy, the power of our politics, then we can get to shared solutions to shared challenges, from inequity to climate change to whatever it may be, sort that out through our politics, and then the private sector can be one of those places where we come together across our political divisions, across our tribal divisions, to say that we're going to put politics out of the private sector, but that's how we unite to build things and create things together through the system of free market capitalism. So that's the broader vision here. That's what motivates me to do this. And very quickly, your view also is that CEOs can have a view, they can have an opinion, and they can take a stand. It just shouldn't necessarily be forced upon the business and therefore the investors in that business as a result. Because you've taken a stand and you've had to make tough choices with a, a company that you've founded in the past because you were criticized for not saying enough after the death of George Floyd. You were then criticized for saying that a, a U.S. president shouldn't be thrown off social media after the, the capital attacks on January the 6th. Vivek, should CEOs be able to have an opinion and it not reflect on the broader company? Because we don't separate that today either. I think it's a great point. We can draw that distinction because every CEO is still a citizen. And speaking in your capacity as a citizen, that's a great thing. However, the problem, in my view, comes up when you use corporate resources and corporate power to be able to foist your views on the rest of society. And my view is in a true democracy, everyone's voice and vote counts equally. Whether you're a CEO or whether you're somebody who lives in a rural community 100 miles away, in a democracy on political questions, everyone's voice and vote ought to count equally, unadjusted by the number of dollars they control in the market. Which ideas rise to the top in the marketplace of ideas is different than the rules that govern which products rise to the top in a marketplace of products. And so that's what I say is a CEO's view on where to invest capital, the CEO's view should count for more. But the CEO's view on how to address climate change or racial justice, no CEO's view is any more important than any other citizen. That's what I think we need to get back to. Okay, now I get the message. This is not anti-ESG. This is making it correct and appropriate and demystifying it and stopping lip service. We will reconvene on this, my friend. It was a great book. I liked it. And I read it yesterday after I Thank spoke you. to you at 7.30 p.m. Ouch, I'm sleep deprived. Thank you very much. Great to have you on the show. Vivek Ramaswamy there, Appreciate founder and executive chairman of Strive Asset Management. We'll speak again soon.